This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. It's good to see you and to welcome you to this time. We arrive at the second Sunday of Advent, and as um, we don't always do it in this church, but um, the four, we have the four candles of our Advent wreath, and in some churches, each one represents um, a word, which is um, last week we had hope, um, and this week our word is peace. So um, as we gather, just holding that in mind, um, and mindful of the places in our world where there is no peace, um, let's pray together. Oh God, um, you call us this day to be bearers of peace in a world that is hurting and longing and troubled and um, chaotic and in need of peace that um, maybe we can't uh, bring or even really hold in our mind what exactly that is, but we can point to the one who is coming, the one who is our peace. So God, help us in this time. We thank you that you meet us in this place, however we come, with or without peace ourselves. Um, you meet us in this time and place, and we are so very grateful. Amen.
Please stand if you are able to call to worship and the Advent candle lighting. In days when God's people longed for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand True peace, just peace. We, we wait, wait as people who yearn for peace that bears the fruit of community, equity, and flourishing for all. We light these candles as signs of God's shocking hope and just peace. May they be beacons calling us to repent and live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all people can gather together to worship and glorify God.
may be seated. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us in the waiting, the watching, the hoping, the longing, the sorrow, the sighing, the rejoicing. Speak to us by your word in these Advent days and walk with us until the day of your coming. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11, and I'm reading from the MSV version. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, 
and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, and I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good news, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. He, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. And the children are invited up front for um, this time. Good to see you. Um, Misha, is that right? Could you come a little bit closer? Because I want you to be able to see up here. So I added underneath our communion table, hold on one second, I put, uh, can, you can look, I put our nativity, a nativity scene. Um, did you see it clear? I see. You got a hel is that a helicopter? Okay. And Sky, what in the world is this thing? What does it look like? Does it remind you of something? Yeah. No. That's right. Right. It's not. It's not a bell. It looks like a bell. It's a candle snuffer, like the acolytes, <coughs> like you use. But it's tiny, right? Okay. And I'll tell you why I have it in just a minute. You're getting ahead of me. <laughs> um, so underneath the altar, I have our nativity set. A anyway, a nativity set. Do you all have a nativity scene at home? Maybe some of you. You don't know? Okay. But if you look up there, and it has some of the characters from the Christmas story, you can come around and look. Um, it, this one has Mary and Joseph, right? And the baby Jesus. The wise men. There's sheep, right? Mary and Joseph, wise men, sheep. Good, good. Yeah, I, there's not a shepherd with that one. That was kind of odd, right? But all some na nativity sets are usually have, they're different, not all of them are the same. Um, and it looks kind of fancy. If, you know, if I, when I think about Mary and Joseph in that time period, in this one, they're kind of dressed fancy, right? Doesn't it look that way? There's kind of like some silver and, and uh, sparkle and stuff that I just don't imagine that it was kind of, it was quite like that. Um, and the other thing I don't know if you know, but there um, that it, so Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and at that time in in Israel, so that was in in Israel, and um, that there had been war and lots of property and the temple had been destroyed and and then the, they lost the war and so the Romans were there and the Romans kind of took over um, the country and so then everybody that lived there had to had to obey or do what this other other nations people came and told them to do so this was after the war, but it was still, they were um, kind of held captive in their own country. 
And the reason I'm telling you that is because today there's war happening in that same place today, in Jerusalem, in Israel. And it's not happening in Bethlehem so much, but it's very close. It's in an area called the West Bank. Um, and so it's kind of a serious topic for the children's time. But I thought it was important because this is what I heard this week, is that there's a pastor who, is, who has a church in that part of the world, in the West Bank, a Lutheran church. And they put out their nativity scene this year but instead of just leaving it kind of like that and looking pretty and nice, um, they have kind of rubble, like rocks and bricks and crumbled buildings, really, around their nativity scene. And I thought, wow. Because they just want to remember, one, that the original kind of nativity wasn't like that, but also that today, for the people in Bethlehem, it's a really difficult time for the people in Israel and Gaza and the West Bank and I don't know if you've seen pictures of it on it happens on the news I mean they show it and it's really awful it's really awful okay and now that gets me to why there's this is that we were t we have two candles on our lighted on our advent wreath and the first one is for hope and the second one is for peace but it's also sometimes called the Bethlehem candle. So, some folks in the larger church, so in the denomination, which I won't try to explain, but they made a suggestion that in our churches that we not light the second candle of the Advent wreath, not light the Bethlehem candle as a way to remember what's happening in that part of the world. So I thought, hmm, should we do that? Sometimes the light can be a reminder of that one, to pray for peace, and we can specifically pray for peace in Bethlehem, in, in Israel. Um, or we can extinguish it, and the fact that the light is not there might also be a reminder to pray for Bethlehem, to pray for Israel. So once again, I'm kind of talking a lot. What, do you, what are your thoughts? What do you think? God bless you. Yeah. Right, well, it, we could do either one, yeah. And it was, it was kind of hard. <clears throat> Um, as I thought about it, because I thought, well, it could go either way. But, I mean, both can do the same thing. We already lighted the candle, that's right. You think we should keep it lighted? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could. We could blow it out, but I think that's a good point. That's a good point. It's already lighted, and I'm sharing with you, with all of us, that that is the candle of peace, and it's the candle that's also, some churches call the Bethlehem candle. Um, and so we will remember to pray for the people in Bethlehem and Israel that the war would stop. Can we do that this Advent season? Okay, well, how about we pray? And Claire, that is a very fun looking helicopter that you have. I'm really glad you brought that with you today. <coughs> Yay. Let's pray. Oh God, we do get in some hard places where we're challenged and it's hard to know kind of what to do, how to pray, um, but we have a specific call to prayer or way to pray this morning is that we are asked to remember the people of Israel and in particular those in the West Bank and Gaza who um, for them this Advent Christmas season will be one of fear and um, so God we pray that war would end 
that you would restore peace, not only in Israel, but in all the warring places in our world. We pray for peace for the children and for the nations, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here. Got your hands full. <laughs> So I'm reading from the Gospel of Mark. This is chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. It says, The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, makes his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of forgiveness, of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this is the Sunday in Advent where the cast of characters begins to get a little odd. And speaking of cast of characters, yesterday I discovered in the church office, kind of in the back office, um, some Christmas decorations. There were two very old cardboard boxes stuffed with even older paper um, and more paper, really, than contents in the box. The first box, really big. And in it was a homemade stable that was complete with a scrap of indoor-outdoor carpet, three camels, two severely chipped, a donkey, a cow, and one wise man. The second box, much smaller, um, Written on it said nativity figures. There was another camel, another cow, two more donkeys, uh, four sheep and a shepherd, three wise men, the holy family, and two angels. Okay. Now it goes without saying that this was a conglomeration of characters from several different nativity sets. Some were made of ceramic, some hard plastic and some soft, softer, like flexible plastic. One angel was perfectly suited for the little post that came out of the top of the stable, which I thought would be for a star, but the angel works. Um, the other angel kind of looked like a bad cake topper. So <laughs> that one I put inside the stable kind of to the back where you couldn't see it very well. Um, and I set out all four wise men. And yes, I did set it out in the church office. I was there for the world to see. Now you may be wondering, and I know the volunteers and others that staff in the office are gonna go, really, why did we put this nativity set in this you know, beautifully remodeled, modern church office. Um, it isn't like it's a family heirloom, you know, that we delight in taking out every year and setting it out. It looks kind of pitiful. I even had the thought that maybe someone would see it and decide to donate a newer one. 
um, a, a more appealing set for the church office. But then I remembered, oh, there's this one that's kind of up back in one of the rooms up there. Um, and I may move this one out there. But anyway, it does have its quaintness. Um, and it might be a conversation starter. It's one that would be fine for children to play with. It's hard to mess up something that's already messed up, right? And that nativity scene goes well with our characters in scripture this morning. The prophet Isaiah and John the baptizer. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. In the Isaiah reading, it's like there's this committee gathered in the kingdom. God has the floor pacing back and forth, ready to release the latest and greatest news from the divine office. The whole committee of heaven leans in. The archangels stop tapping their pens. The cherubim stop eyeing the bagels on the side table. The seraphim put down their phones and start listening at last because God is about to speak. God is about to pass judgment, about to lower the boom, they think, but they never know because the one has this annoying, almost um, omniscient habit of saying something completely surprising on a regular basis. Comfort thunders the voice, the voice that made planets and galaxies. Oh, comfort my people. Michael and Gabriel exchange glances around the conference table. Brows knit and eyes narrow among the angelic beings, high and low. Did I hear comfort? Comfort, not judgment, not turn or burn, but comfort? No one questions, however, because the presence isn't done yet. Just catching a breath between words, uh, before the words come pouring out like soaking rain on a parched ground. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. The book of Isaiah covers such a large, long span of time that there had to have been more than one person who wrote under the name of Isaiah. Chapters 1 through 39 is what's known as 1st Isaiah and is concerned about the faithfulness of the people of God and the dominant mood in those first chapters is one of judgment. The people were complacent, selfish, and self-centered. They found solace in things and not in the ever-present spirit of God in their midst. Isaiah preached until he was blue in the face, and it didn't amount to much. And then the northern kingdom and southern kingdom both are overrun by enemies. There is desolation. There is a land forsaken. And now is the beginning of what's called second Isaiah, chapter 40. They are broken, afraid, longing to be gathered up and comforted. So back to the committee meeting that's happening. Um, after the initial shock, the beings gathered um, around the table, they begin to nod along with the echoes of God's proclamation. And the amen corner pipes up in a voice, um, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. In the wilderness, that used to be a lush garden, find an oasis. In a sandy and windswept desert that used to be a marketplace, clear a path. But this road work they understand and want us to understand isn't so that we can get out it's so that God can get in. 
make straight the highway for God. It's not that God's GPS is malfunctioning, and it's, it's that God knows, God needs to know that we want a visit. The consummate, gentle presence, God never comes where God isn't welcomed. God never opens doors that we barricade. The committee meeting becomes a gospel choir now, and as always happens in God's kingdom, worship breaks out. Around the table, a voice says, can I get an amen? And another says, well, what are we amening? Then one jumps on the table and sings out that these troublesome yet lovable, fragile creatures are beloved by God and have access to eternity. In the word, the chorus rings out, in the word is eternity, hope, restoration, and reclamation. Amen, rumbles God as the I am slides to the door to usher all these angelic, swaying beings out the door. Head to the rooftops, to the mountaintops. Shout and sing again and again until all can see God is coming. They rush out to tell us again. And at the door, who stands at the door? The Word. The Word smiles and says, soon, I'll be there soon, so save some room for me. And the chorus echoes all the way through the years to John, John the baptizer, sitting in the desert, eating his bugs and honey breakfast, and his head starts to bob, and his toe starts to tap. Amen. And then there's this rumbling inside of him, in the core of his being, as he becomes the voice that repeats the words and prepares the way. But, you know, we, we heard the reading. Is John's message in our gospel text one of peace, of comfort? He includes the words about preparing the way, but he skips the comfort bit. John isn't about comfort, or at least comfort as we imagine it. Comfort as in taking it easy, or comfort as in lying back and letting go, that's not a John sort of sermon. He's stirring, stirring up, not lying back. He's about working hard and not taking it easy. He's not about soothing troubled waters, but about turning things upside down. And that is certainly true. But beneath the words and the bluster and the creative costumes of these characters, John is confident that the one who is coming will offer peace. A peace that transforms, equips, and unites. A just peace that lifts up those who have been pressed down gathers in those who have been ignored, strengthens those who have been weak. We heard Isaiah's prophecy and then John the baptizer entered with his retro clothing, locust stuffed and dripping honey. John stands before us. Talk about crazy characters in a nativity scene. There they are. They're there every year. They're here every year. Charismatic characters. And those characters on through the ages, even unto today, they come and go from Isaiah to John. They've prepared the way for other 
preparers of the way. Do you know what I'm going to say next? Guess what? That we are now preparers of the way. Now it is our turn, our time. We are preparers of the way for the one who was and is and is to come. May it be so. Amen. I invite us to stand. We're going to sing All Earth is Waiting. It's number 210. seated. So we come to a time when we share with one another our joys and concerns or way God moments, it says in the bulletin, or ways that you've seen God at work in the world. Um, we started last week, or we'll do f through Advent, is that as we share them, we'll name them in an attitude of prayer. And so after I um, sometimes you'll share them and, and I'll repeat them just so that to make sure everybody has heard. And then our response is, God of peace, hear our prayer. I know it says God of hope up there, but it's God of peace. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. What, both work, right? Both work. Um, so I'll invite you to share um, your joys or concerns or a way that we can pray for you or someone else. I'll, I'll invite you to pray for Dave Zielinski. Dave um, had to go to the hospital yesterday. Um, his, his blood sugar was off the charts and didn't know it, and so he was um, not himself. Um, he went into, he was admitted to ICU. Today, he's doing much better. They hope that he will be in a, out of ICU today and um, just continues to kind of come back to himself and then figure out what's what's been going on. So prayers for Dave and Tracy Zielinski. God of peace, hear our prayer. Frankie.
Frankie lifts up a joy and continuing concern for us to pray for her brother John who had an awful fall but is making progress and so we will continue to pray for his healing. God of peace, hear our prayer. Yeah, Trudy. <laughs> Life will be totally different than she has. <laughs> Yay. And pray for her husband who is in Pakistan working uh, with, with people there who um, he's trying to help, and they've been without him in months, and he had a baby. And okay. So they need prayers and strength to stay here in a foreign country. <laughs> yes. All right. So we will pray for Nasim as she takes the written uh, driver's portion of the test for her driver's license, and that'll be amazing for her, and prayers for her husband who is in Pakistan um, until the 18th, so um, as you are missing one another, I'm sure, but grateful for the work that he's doing, so. God of peace, hear our prayer. Ashley. Her, her first name is escaping me. Kimberly. Kimberly. Uh, prayers for Kimberly. Kimberly facing uh, knee surgery, knee surgery on both knees, and for her healing and strength and quick recovery. God of peace, hear our prayer. Dorothy. Yes, good news. So, yes, Reverend Tom McCloskey, we continue to pray for. He came through his heart surgery and continued prayers for his recovery. God of hope, yeah. hear our prayer. Yeah, Diane. I heard yesterday. It's great. <laughs> yesterday it was such a good time. All the women's circles got together. We did our healing. I don't remember what it was called. Soul. 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 <laughs> A retreat, party, you know. <laughs> yes. yes. I know it was. So a shout out for United Women in Faith and for their gathering yesterday and for the times of prayer and healing and exercise and nourishing food. I'd like to add to that. And an addition, all right. The meditation, we talked about this window up here. Uh -huh. And Trudy really gave us something to think about. And she said that when you meditate, you're communicating with God, maybe not in words, mm -hmm. but that we think of that as, as God's thoughts coming down to mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when we meditate, our thoughts are going back up. And it's like a breath mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. And I, I just thought it was... Wonderful. Beautiful. <laughs> thank you for sharing that, and thank you, Trudy. <laughs> so we give thanks for United Women in Faith and their gathering and how it continues to have an impact. God of peace, hear our, our prayer. prayer. What else? Yeah, Diane. Hi, Andy. Andy Rollinger, through the prayer work this week. Mm-hmm.
Okay, so a name that has been added to our circle of prayer concerns, um, Andrew Belinter, in a terrible car accident and continued has healing and needs continued healing, so needs our prayers. Thank you, Diane, and happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. It, okay. God of peace, hear our prayer. Others? Thank you. Okay. Let's pray together. God, you hear all of our prayers. We have lifted some in our voices, and we hold others in our hearts. You know all of those listed in our bulletin. You know the prayers of our neighbors. And we trust and know that you hear each one, that you are already at work. And it brings us peace. God, continue to show us how we are an answer to some of these prayers, how you ask us to be your hands and feet in places and help us to be um, willing to go. Um, God, continue to open our hearts and minds to what it means to be preparers of the way in the world preparers of a way for peace to enter in, preparers of the way for hope as we live as people of hope. Help us to share that with others. We're grateful for your presence always and how you continue to shape us as a faithful people, and all God's people said, amen. Please listen to the invitation to communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. And let's read. I'm sorry. I was just sorry. God, <laughs> of, tenderness, God of tenderness and, and love, love, breathe your, your grace into, into our, our lives. lives. Forgive, Forgive our wandering ways and guide, guide us along your paths of peace. When we lose our way and, and forget the reason to the purpose of this season, carry us back to you. Lead, Lead us, us up to, to that, that high mountain of faith, faith and, and hope, hope that, that we might truly proclaim, Here is our God. In your, your holy name we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> comfort, O oh comfort my people, says our God. You have served your term. Your penalty is paid. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Almighty God, we have been reminded to prepare the way, to be designers and offerers of peace. In these gifts, we pray that our giving continues to point to Christ, who comes in love and just peace. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. I'll remind you as we prepare to share in the great thanksgiving that in the United Methodist Church, the communion table is open to everyone. You do not need to be a member of this church or baptized or um, you don't have to be anything. You just have to come and want to have a heart to come. Um, so all are invited. Our great thanksgiving, we are not doing sung responses, they're spoken responses, but there are more responses for you to share in this time of the great thanksgiving. So it's all on the screen for us. God is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Yes. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Holy One, our God. Yes. Good and beautiful. We thank you, God, for in the beginning you made a way for light in the darkness. You make a way for justice in this world, condemning oppression and demanding freedom for the oppressed. You have opened a way for us in Jesus, the way of love and life that cannot die. And still Christ, you make a way in the world, always in the and Here at this table, you make a way for us to love each other, a way for you to enter our hearts. Therefore, we sing your praise with all the faithful. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are all who come in your name, and blessed is Jesus, your Christ, who prepared the way for your empire of grace. Jesus is the way for those who are hoping and comfort for those who are weary. His love makes smooth what is rough in our lives and straightens what is crooked. In his death and resurrection is the way of life eternal, a grace that transforms our lives from death to life. We remember that on the night that he was betrayed, as Jesus sat at the table and broke bread with his friends, he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Remember me each time you do this. After they had eaten, he took the cup and said, remember me as you drink from this, for it is my life poured out for you, the beginning of a new relationship with God. As long as we break this bread and share this cup, we remember his death and resurrection until he comes again. Therefore, remembering these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Prepare the way for your Holy Spirit in these gifts of the bread and the cup that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Prepare the way of your Holy Spirit in us that we may be for the world the body of Christ. In this meal you have prepared a way to enter us and through us to enter into the world. Baptize us in your Holy Spirit, that we may be made new. May we make smooth the rough places. May we bring comfort to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. 
that by your grace, through our faith, your glory may be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite those who are helping to serve to come at this time.
thank you. Let's pray together the prayer after communion. Gracious God, we thank you for this mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Send us into the world to prepare a way for you in shocking hope and in just peace. May we be the way you enter the world in the power of your spirit and the loving presence of the beloved Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll invite you to stand, and we're going to go out singing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. So it always feels weird to me to make announcements right here. I'm going to have to figure out a different place to make them. But anyway, read the announcements. Thank you. And um, remember, I'll lift up to the um, poinsettias. You, can, you still have the opportunity to share them in memory, memory or in honor of someone. And I'll lift up the air conditioner. To date, we have received $5,169. That's 17% of our goal. Yay! So thank you. And thank you for those uh, contributions yet to come. So peacemakers, um, we have joined this funky cast of characters in the nativity scene. We're a part of that scene. So I send us all out to be peacemakers in a world that is in desperate need of us, peace. Go with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and go in peace, amen.